army units restore security and stability to al Akkari farm and tell us for in homes countryside and continue chasing their remnants in al Hamidiyah. Solidarity stands in support of Syria's confrontation of the aggressive war against it. Extremist gunmen affiliated with Al Mustaqbal current in Tripoli continue attacking local residents in Jabal Muhsan area. After the elimination most of their leaders and the destruction of their ammunition warehouses, the army meanwhile continues to advance on several axes in the direction of al qusair city. In another operation carried out today, the army killed terrorist Wardan al-Zahuri, one of the leaders of Jabhat al-Nusra in al qusair A large number of Jabhat al-Nusra terrorists were also eliminated and the hideouts and weapons destroyed. Earlier, the army destroyed several tunnels that were used by terrorists for the storage and transfer of weapons and ammunition in al -Qusair. A number of terrorists were killed. In Damascus countryside, army units destroyed two cars loaded with explosives on Harasta Damascus Highway, killing all the terrorists inside them. An official source pointed out that a Mercedes car loaded with 700 kilograms of explosives was destroyed near Daya Company as the second car, which was carrying 600 kilograms of explosives, was destroyed near al Karaz exhibition in Harasta City. In Jobar, in Damascus suburbs, our armed forces clashed with terrorists near al Manashir Square, killing and injuring most of them. Their machine guns and ammunition were confiscated. The army also pursued terrorists in the farms surrounding Tishreen Hospital and Dahr al Masti in Barza neighborhood, eliminating a large number of them. Heavy losses have been inflicted by the Syrian Arab army on terrorists and their hideouts in the surroundings of Minnik Airport and the Central Prison, as well as in Khan al-Asal, al Leramun, Bustan al-Qasr, and Sheikh Said in Aleppo and its suburbs. A missile launcher was destroyed and a number of terrorist hideouts were demolished in Hilan and the vicinity of the agriculture building, the glass factory and al Mathafa Hill and al Khulandi fuel station near Aleppo Central Prison. Other army units clashed with terrorists in several quarters of Khan al-Asal, inflicting on them heavy losses. In Aleppo City, the army clashed with armed men who had committed acts of killing and looting in Sheikh Said, Bustan al-Qasr, and Sheikh Maqsud, killing and wounding a large number of terrorists. Large quantities of weapons and ammunition in a trailer in Qadi Asker Square were destroyed. Moreover, a large number of terrorists were eliminated at Haidariya Square. After three years of being imprisoned in the Israeli jails for charges of links with the motherland Syria, the artist Fida Majd al-Sha'ir enjoyed freedom returning to his town of Majd al-Shams in the occupied Syrian Golan. In a statement to Sana correspondent in occupied Golan, the freed prisoner asserted that the occupation will end no matter how long it lasts and all the chains will break down, adding that the Zionist entity's arrogance that we see now is just the beginning of the end for this entity. The freed prisoner pointed out that the years he spent in the jails of the occupation will only increase his adherence to the homeland, just like many of our steadfast people in the occupied Syrian Gulan, despite the Israeli aggressive and abusive practices against them. Ashair saluted the Syrian Arab people and the Syrian Arab army, which is defending the country against the aggression and conspiracies. He expressed full confidence that Syria will soon achieve victory thanks to the sacrifices of the Syrian people and to their solidarity and steadfastness against terrorism. 
Russia's Emergency Situations Ministry sent a plane loaded with humanitarian aid to the displaced Syrians who are staying in Lebanon. The ministry's spokesperson, Irina Rossio, said an IL-76 aircraft carrying 27 tons of humanitarian aid took off from Moscow to Beirut. Rossius added that the aid includes food materials, electric generators, and first aid packages. Russia has sent several planes loaded with humanitarian aid to the Syrians in Jordan and Lebanon who were forced to leave their country due to the acts of the armed terrorist groups. The Secretary General of the Russian National Security Council, Nikolai Patrichov, discussed with the U.S. Minister of Defense, Chuck Hagel, military cooperation between the two sides and the crisis in Syria. The spokesman for the Pentagon, George Little, said that the two sides touched on the prospects of cooperation between the ministries of defense in both countries, pointing out that Hagel hopes dialogue continues with the Russian side on security issues. Austria stressed that lifting arms embargo on the Syrian opposition will create many complexities for the Austrian unit working for the UNDOF in Golan. Associated France press quoted the Austrian Foreign Minister Michael Spindliger as saying, following a cabinet meeting, that lifting arms embargo on the Syrian opposition will complicate the mission of Austrian unit. Austrian President Heinz Fischer had stressed that the Austrian unit for the UNDOF will remain in Syria despite the risks, pointing out that the mission of the Austrian unit is to maintain stability and peace. The Bulgarian Committee for Solidarity with Syria, along with the Syrian community and the Syrian Students' Union, organized a massive demonstration in front of the Turkish embassy in the Bulgarian capital, Sofia, expressing solidarity with the Syrian people, army and leadership in facing the conspiracy Syria is being exposed to. The protesters denounced the crimes committed by Erdogan's government in Syria and the Turkish support of armed terrorist groups. The vice president of the Bulgarian National Party, Jampanski, said in a speech he delivered on this occasion that Bulgarian parties and political movements support the Syrian people and army in their struggle against the armed terrorist groups, criticizing the help offered by the Erdogan's government to terrorists in Syria. Finally, and in Lebanon, clashes erupted today in the city of Tripoli, killing one man and injuring three others, thus raising the death toll over the last three days to 10, including two soldiers, as the number of the injured climbed to 126. The city witnessed last night fierce clashes, during which gunmen used rocket-propelled grenades and mortar shells, causing the damage of dozens of houses and shops. Universities and schools remained closed, as many Many families were forced to flee their homes. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Vani Gönjian after a short break. Good afternoon. The Minister of Agriculture, Engineer Ahmed Al Qadri, stressed the country's need for the joint mission of the Food and Agriculture Organization and the World Food Program. The Minister also highlighted the importance of reflecting the current situation of the agricultural sector, noting that the economic sanctions imposed on Syria have negatively affected the livelihood of the Syrian people and the agricultural sector. Since the beginning of the year until mid-May, Syrian Investment Commission included 10 investment projects in the domains of industry, services and transport with an estimated cost that reached 11 billion Syrian pounds. The value of the machines, equipment and transport services is estimated by more than 10 billion Syrian pounds. Director of the Commission, Hala Ghazal, said that there are two kinds of projects. The first one was presented by the Green Initiative, which is the company of green energy to invest about 1,000 touring cars powered by electricity generated from the solar energy from the stations established for this purpose, with a cost of a billion and 100 million Syrian pounds. And the second project is by Syrian company for distribution of diesel in various governorates with a cost of 2 billion Syrian pounds. 
Director General of the Industrial Cities at the Ministry of Local Administration, Akram Al Hassan, said that the ministry has modified all investment regulations in the industrial cities in line with the current circumstances. The most important measure was reducing the first installment due for the industrial booth from 35 to 15 percent. The number of semi-annual installments was increased from 10 to 20 installments. As for the industrialists who are affected due to living in the hot areas and want to move to other areas, the first installment was delayed pending receiving the com compensation given by the Reconstruction Committee. The American oil crude fell for a second day after industry data showed that the U.S. inventories rose for a fourth week. The longest run of gains since February. Brent snapped a fourth day advancing after failing to breach its 50-day moving average. Futures have traded over 104 per barrel today. U.S. stocks rose, sending benchmark indexes to reset after Federal Reserve Bank said that the central bank should continue its bond buying to boost growth. European stock declined before European Union leaders meet. Japanese shares, on the other hand, gains after the Bank of Japan upgraded its economic assessment by keeping policy unchanged. advanced amid speculation that the chairman of the U.S. Federal Reserve may hint at the need for sustained stimulus in the world's largest economy, countering further outflows in investor holdings. weakened for a second day against the euro after Bank of Japan policymakers affirmed a plan to double the monetary base over two years. Japan's currency declined versus 30 of its 16 major peers after a government report showed that the trade deficit swelled more in April than economists forecast as exports were lower than estimated. With this we conclude our news. Thank you for watching and goodbye.